this Jets team's a Randall Cobb player away from making the playoffs. <laughs> Maybe in Houston, they just didn't give a fuck. I don't know. They didn't give a fuck until they didn't want to play for him, and then the owner exposed it is what happened. NBA players could play the most professional sports. He got popped for PEDs. It wasn't PEDs. It's from Viagra. Why is a 20-year-old trying to get his dick hard with Viagra? It's a real thing with, like, younger people. It's a real thing. About to get all this dope. Ain't no fuck niggas know. I swear to God, we the ghosts. This ain't the story they told. Man, if you know, then you know. I never had to tell my dogs that we on roof for breaks. They pay for getters, they want money. More. Welcome to the Real O Show. I'm Zachary. Joining me as always is my partner in crime, my brother Joshua. And we have a couple things to talk about today, but. Probably the biggest thing we're going to talk about is Bronny James and LeBron James finally made their debut. It's been talked about for a long time. LeBron said he's not going to retire till Bronny plays. Joshua, is this a media stunt? Dude, this was a historical night. Historical. We might we might see Carlos Boozer come out of retirement after this because his sons are pretty good too. No, I'm, I'm just not even playing. I, honestly, I, I kind of like it. I'm not even going to front. Like, say whatever you want about LeBron. Why be the greatest basketball player of all time if my son can't come with me? Now, I will say it was a year too early. LeBron pushed it a year too early. He should have let Bronny transfer somewhere else, play somewhere else, and get a little bit under him. You could tell yesterday he was a fish out of water. He's underdeveloped. Listen, as soon as he checks on the game, Julius Randle fucking just bucket right away. And all I could think about was like, yes, Julius Randle is an all-star. He is a good player. But it just, it was like a hard, like, oh, it's shit. It's almost like when he steps on the court, because if you saw the the video of when he came on, Anthony Edwards immediately picks him up. It's almost like when he comes on the court, the NBA players are going to go out of their way to make sure he doesn't score, and they're going to try to score on him. Like, they're going to go out of their way to, like, straight pick on him. I don't know if it's real, but Anthony Edwards was, like, chirping him, and he was like, hey, bro, you don't even need to take a shower after this game. Like, you were just chilling. Like, I don't I know if that, that was real. I didn't see that. I don't know if that was real, but someone was saying, like, because they were kind of like, like, he was chirping him a little bit, like, you could see it. And then someone, like, quote tweeted it and was like, bro, you don't even need to take a shower after the game. I didn't see that. I saw that's I can't a good. That. That's a good quote. Like, like that. Yeah. that's not, like, a mean thing to say. Like, bro, like, what is like Bron gonna be mad at him for being him? Come but on. Anthony Edwards also just chirps everybody. That's what I'm so. saying. Anthony Edwards is known for jawing people. Like he was telling Justin Jefferson that if he started lifting weights, he'd be Derrick Henry. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like he's gonna be jawing. So that's why I said that the chirp didn't see him out of pocket. Like it seemed like that was something he would actually. He also say. once said that he could play in the big leagues as well. I think he could. He, I mean, he's an incredible Listen, athlete. I, I think NBA players could play the most professional sports. I like agree with NBA that. NBA players I could be the that. most, they could play the most professional sports out of everyone, just like the percentage of them. They could play professional tennis. Most of them could play football. You know, they they would find other sports. Most of them could probably play baseball. It, that's a reality. Like basketball is much harder to get into than any, any other sport. So I, I just want to go back to my point because you might have answered it, but I want a direct answer. Is it a media stunt by LeBron James For having sure. brought it in? Listen, this is all, we talk about this all the time. Winners write history. LeBron is just writing his history right now. He has the power to pen his own shit in. That's what's going on. Like, Bronny straight up might retire when LeBron retires. I think Bronny might play with his other kid. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the world we live in. Like, Bron could play 25, 26 years in the league. He's in year 22. Yeah. This is, he just tied the record with Vince Carter. Like, he could easily go to 25, 26. Bryce James, the younger one, yeah. is actually, like, but Bryce, really good. Bryce looks like LeBron's son. He's yeah. tall as shit. When I yeah. see Bronny, like, Bronny is small. Like, I don't know what gene Bronny got hit with, but he is, like, really small compared yeah, and, to Bronny. He, yeah, he's, like, six foot, six one-ish. But he does kind of look like he moves like him a little bit. You can see it. Dude, You, I'm, I, I'm not disagreeing with that. But, again, I just feel like he's a little underdeveloped. And, again, he's probably going to go to the G League. He's going to get some minutes because that's all it, That's all that matters. It doesn't matter that LeBron wants to hit his son to play with him. Like, that's irrelevant. If you want your son to actually stick in the league, he has to get minutes. He has to be playing basketball. That's in the G League. Now, with that being said, he might get bullied in the G League. Like, these these guys are trying to make the league. They're going up and down. Like these guys are dogs. You're I think hungry it, dogs. It might be worse in the G League for him. I agree because the play. Listen, we we both played minor league sports. You played baseball. I played hockey. Right at the double A level. 
I when I was in Fort Wayne playing for the Comets, we had the Pacers G League team there. Those guys are fucking hoopers. Like, those guys are hoopers. And when I say that, like, they are better than college basketball. Like, the G League has dogs. They're, in it. they're playing for their life. Exactly. And that's my point. And, but the point is, when you're in minors, everything is harder. Yeah. The higher you go up in professional, the easier it gets. The people around you are better. The facilities are better. Your travel's better. You're making more money. Like everything gets better. And if anybody disagrees with what Joshua just said, Pete Rose, probably the best baseball player ever who actually recently passed away. So that's very sad, but also bet on games, which is kind of, I respect that. But either way, he said that the big leagues was the easiest level of baseball he's ever played in. So if anybody disagrees with what Josh was saying, I'm just coming back. One of the best baseball players ever actually agrees with what Josh would just said. And if you also disagree, you probably also never played professional sports. Agreed. So that also might play in the role of that. And, and, and before we transition, I just, I, I want to quote one of our favorite content creators, Big Cat. He called the LeBron James and Bronny a photo shoot. So I thought that was hilarious. It could be. I mean, listen, I actually think J.J. Redick is a good coach. They played a clip. I watched on Twitter today. They played a clip of, clip of J.J. Redick in the huddle and then um, DeMar Ham, who was their coach last year. The difference is so noticeable. Like, J.J. Redick can, is going to be a great basketball coach. Like, the players respect him. He knows what the fuck he's talking about. Like, after the game, he touched the ball, and he was like, bro, I'm, I'm going to – complain to the league that these balls are need to be more worn in yeah. like that that comes from a guy who played well we're kind of going through a transition right now with sports where some of the best coaches are former players and because when you get to professional sports yeah the x and o's matters the strategy you know jj reddick after the game before he talked about the ball he's like you know i want our team shooting like 19 threes a half to you know stay on pace with the the game average. And I was like, Oh, that's kind of interesting to like, okay, you're trying to shoot, you know, whatever 36, 40 threes a game, which is like the X and O's part, but it's the respect. You want the best players in the world to respect you and want to play together for you. Because if you don't play well, the coaches get fired. The players don't get fired. Yeah. So I think that is like kind of where we're going back to. You're seeing that a lot with our Detroit Lions and Dan Campbell. Like everybody wants to play for the Lions. It's the leader of men, bro. You you have to be a leader of men. You have to be respected. That is the only way. These guys don't care about the five seven white dude that has the X and O's. Like they really don't give a fuck. And not to mention they're making way more money than that coach. And they're like, who the fuck is this guy anyway? So that's why JJ is going to win for sure. But I want to stay on sports here. Jameis Winston is back is back, possibly the most electric quarterback in the NFL because he's either going to throw five TDs or five interceptions. And I want to say the Cleveland Browns are in single-handedly the worst situation in football. They owe Deshaun Watson no matter what, unless they trade him and another team eats the contract, which will not happen. So they can't cut him. They pretty much have to keep him slash play him. They owe him $144 million guaranteed in two years. And this is going to be a big lesson for every person going forward of why guaranteed money is going to keep getting chipped away and keep being like, we can't afford to pay you for that exact reason. Like Deshaun Watson has ruined yeah. a generation of people that were going to get a ton of guaranteed money. He kind of fucked it over for Lamar Jackson, who actually deserves it. A thousand percent. Who actually did. Like, I, I would give Lamar Jackson 200 million guaranteed. 100%, dude. Deshaun Watson? Eh, probably not. Yeah, but at that time, when he was playing in Houston, he was playing very good, and you have to assume that he wasn't sexually assaulting 28-plus women. Like, you didn't know all these things. Now, I if I'm giving someone $200 million, I'm hiring an investigator. I'm finding everything. I'm finding every skeleton in your closet. Yeah. For real. And at least Which I'm is what they did. It. Which is probably what they did, but... When you send someone to Cleveland, Ohio, and just Ohio in general, they don't give a fuck what you do there. Yeah, but listen, listen, listen. You don't just catch 28 sexual assaults just like, oh, because I moved to Cleveland. No, 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 no. You you were doing some shit. Now, but maybe, no, no, I maybe agree. in Houston, I, they just didn't give a fuck. I don't know. Well, they didn't give a fuck till he didn't want to play for him, and then the owner exposed it is what happened. That's literally what happened. Though. Everybody knew. Like, when it all came out, I was still playing professional baseball, and I was training in Arizona with NFL players at the same facility. And when all that came out, they're like, yeah, we knew he had a sex addiction. Like it was, it was known. 
it, w- it was very much known. But then when you don't want to play for an owner who doesn't want to let go of their franchise quarterback, shit comes to the surface. So you send him to Cleveland, Ohio, where Ohio people don't give a fuck what you do. They don't care. They don't care. They will accept you if you win games. Now, him that's not hurt. only to Ohio. Let's be honest with ourselves. If you're a good ball player, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. I mean, Especially in Ohio. Anywhere. It does not matter anywhere, bro. Anywhere. Eh, Guys are beating anywhere. their wives. They're fucking, they're literally like running people over. They're like, hey, but they're on the Chiefs though. So it don't matter. Did you, Jameson Williams, J-Mo. Yeah. He got popped for PEDs. It wasn't PEDs. He didn't, he didn't get suspended though. Yeah. It, it, they're, it's like getting like delayed because they're pushing it. It's from Viagra. Bro, why is a 20-year-old trying to get his dick hard with Viagra? Bro, it's 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 a thing. It's a real thing with like younger people. It's a real uh, thing. I don't I don't get it. I, I think it's actually a performance enhancing because, you know, I have, I like get your I, yeah, bro, it gets your blood pumping cuz it's not like your dick's hard the whole time. You are just like rolling, you know. Yeah, but that's kind of weird to yeah. before a football game. Yeah, people come, do it. Nah, come on, man. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Ocho talked about that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Ocho talks about like when you're on Viagra, bro. You're just like I've heard, I've heard him say that. Yeah, dude. Like, I don't know. That's there's, wild. There's something about that. But anyways, that I think that's what I think that's why I got delayed because they're like, oh, it actually was Viagra, and it, th- there's a gray area. But it's a real thing with like younger people these days, like popping Viagra at 20, which fucks you over for when you're 50, for real. So, but anyways, let's transition to the biggest song of the summer, Not Like Us, Kendrick Lamar, which if you watch our show at all, obviously we haven't listened to it much, but respect how well it's done. We've talked about it a lot. We've talked, we've probably done seven podcasts. I probably mean, mentioned it. we must be real haters because we have talked about it quite a bit. Yeah, but, but it's, but it's, it's what we do on the cultural sports center. But yeah. either way, Kendrick Lamar now seems to be walking back, calling Drake a pedophile. What? Why do you think that is? is do you think it's because of the Super Bowl coming out? Yes, I think that has something to do with it. Like I said, the NFL wants nothing to do with pedophilia or anything like that. Like, nothing. Even when, throwback, this was in the NFL, this was like college football days, um, when uh, Penn State hit, got hit Jerry with all, Sandusky. Jerry Sandusky got hit with all those like touching boys, like I would have the boys, the, whatever, not going to get into that. All that kind of got shoved under the rug really quick. You know what I mean? Like you don't even hear about that shit anymore. You they don't want those two things together. So I think that is part of it. It's a lot of a corporate thing. I think it's a corporate you don't talk pedophiles, a lot of petty lot of, lot of pedos in the corporate world. I don't know. To me, I just think that I think people almost took things too literal in the song for what he wrote it for. I think that music is so like subjective and like you can kind of be like, oh, it's this, this, and this when you're in it. But it really didn't mean that. You know, it's, it's like when people like talk about Taylor Swift. They're like, Taylor did this and this and this. And it's like, yeah, she is a smart writer. Like, she may have added those things. But it's like, I don't think it's that deep. You guys are making it that deep. Yeah, I think it's an interesting thing. Because obviously he made this song dissing Drake. And he directly called Drake a pedophile. So it's hard to like, it's hard to walk back and then multiple s- times. Seven months later, be like, no, I didn't mean that. Like, no, if he, you actually didn't mean it, you would have said it right away. Because he says, he says, Drake, you like him young. Yeah. He says a minor. I'm pretty sure he does say, like, he does call him a pedophile. I don't know if he directly calls him. I, I, thought, I haven't listened to it enough. I, I thought he did. E- either way, it seems weird after all this time. Now you're walking a little bit backwards. And academics, DJ Academics was talking about how, because it was SZA who was interviewing him. And he was literally like, bro, that was like the most corporate setup softball question interview ever in the world. So it is, I think it has to do, I think you're right with the corporate world. I also think. Who put on the interview? SZA. Yeah, but like it wasn't SZA's fucking channel. I I, I don't know. I don't don't know. I truly don't know. Do we want to look? No, someone paid for the interview. Of course. Either way. So after some research, it's a little difficult to find even the full interview. So it looks like bizarre whoever owns them put it on but it's just an interesting thing and i feel like the market's almost shifting on the song a little bit where everybody's like he's literally pushing this song so hard and almost needs this song to like even be relevant that i think it's actually hurting him now well that's the thing he he hasn't done anything since that like drake has already dropped another project since like it doesn't matter like this is all kendrick has like he's not like this is what's keeping him afloat and that's where i'm like What's the point? Like, you have to move on. There has to be something more to this. Like, why is there not an album yet? Listen, if he doesn't drop a project before the Super Bowl, like, 
I think I think my whole narrative about Drake or not Drake Kendrick is is completely right. I say this if he does if he does not drop a project before the Super Bowl off the back of this. It actually my narrative was that he was going to drop a project actually after the Super Bowl was was actually my prediction. That makes no sense. Where's the project? That makes no sense. Listen, Rod the, Rod Wave just did the perfect rollout. Rod Wave does it the best in hip hop right now. Other than Drake and Kendrick, he dropped the album, announced the tour, dropped the album, went on tour. That's how it's going to happen. He's going to drop an album, do the Super Bowl, go on tour. That in that order. That's that's the only Listen, way. Listen, if makes he doesn't sense. drop a project, it's fraudulent. He has to. It's fraudulent. But it ha- that's the thing for me though. It almost has to sound like not like us. You if you're if if his album doesn't sound like not like us songs. Now I'm not saying like diss songs to Drake, but like those type of those type of beats, that type of tempo. That's what people want. That's his biggest song of all time, and it's the only Kendrick song you can play in the club. Swimming pools can maybe play, but that's like what 2012. Like that's all he's mean? got. But that's no. Come on, he has all better he songs than that, but they're not like that's club his songs. best song. But they're not club songs. So that's just me. That's Kendrick Lamar's best song. Would you agree? One of them. You got another one off the top of your head? I like uh, King Kuda. I don't even know that great song. song. I legit have no idea what that, that song, song is. That song is a great party song. Like I've played it at parties. Can you rap me the chorus? King Cutter, everybody cut the legs off. Uh, da, 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 da. Like I, that's the like that's the like, that's I don't like know if I heard it. that. I'll play song. the song for you after. It's it's a really it's it's good, dude. It's good. I don't know the exact lyrics of it. Thank like, you for rapping that. I I just had to get it in my head. I haven't listened to the song. In I a was minute, into it though. But it's, I was vibing. Yeah, like, I was vibing. It's a good. It's a good song. That's listen. a great. Listen, I hope he plays that at the Super Bowl. How I, old and is I think that it song? Is. 2015, 2016. My point. Yeah, my point. I mean, he has good songs. Like, bro, he has like, uh, love featuring Zachary. That's a that's a hit. No idea what that song is. Oh my god, that's a hit. That's a that's another good song. Can you play me that later? I'll play you that later. Okay, as well. great. Fe- so, featuring me. Yeah, be featuring you. So I want to get in. Live streaming has just taken over the world. Obviously, as me and Joshua have talked about a lot. If you pay attention to Kai Sinat, Aiden Ross, DJ Academics are probably the three that me and Joshua watch the most. Aiden Ross just announced that he has made two hundred million dollars in the last two years off his kick deal live streaming that like that is fucking mind boggling. Yeah. But that's only because he owns part of kick. So he's like actually getting all the things is that, that wait, he actually has equity. Yeah. This he, is real. Yeah. He has equity in, in kick. That's, that's the whole reason why kick got started in Aiden was directly like offerings to, to all these other people. But it's like, you know, I like this guy queso. Um, really. He's just a gamer, funny guy. He made a good point. He's like, if you're not streaming on everything, then you're fucking up. Unless you're like a Kai or a, you know what I mean? All these like top, top people that only do Twitch. So you're saying if you're not the 0.1%, you have to be on like IG live, TikTok live. Yes. All those. You'll, you'll have, you know, you'll, you can do it where you're live on everything. Right. And then you would drive people to your Twitch. Hey, you know. Blah, blah blah blah. If you don't want to see the ads, go to you know go to Twitch. Da, 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 and you could you could watch. I want to put this on wax since we're here, and I want to I'm gonna clip this up in three years. If you're watching this and you made it this far, one thank you, we really appreciate it. But maybe we'll clip this up in another way because I want this on wax. If you have a thought in your head that you want to get into live streaming or you just started live streaming, please, please, for the love of God, do not go to Twitch. Do not go to kick, go to YouTube and start building your YouTube live. You can do the stream yard and go everywhere. That's fine. I don't care. Go to YouTube live and commit. But like you can't just grow on YouTube. I hear what you're saying, but the way to actually grow to me on streaming is yes, you do want to do all the lives. Obviously you want to be on Twitch, do kick. You want to be live everywhere. But the real key is TikTok. Because TikTok puts you in feed, and then that's where you can drive people. Hey, if you don't want to watch ads, you don't want to do this, go to my Twitch. And that's and you drive people. Like, Queso, I was literally just listening to him. He was like, I had, he was like, I had 100 viewers in my view on Twitch. Like, whatever. Consistently. 
He's like, I started doing it where I went everywhere. And he's like, TikTok Live. Just from doing TikTok Live, I drive people from TikTok Live to my Twitch. Then he's like, then I had 400. Then I was like 1,000. So it's like you can drive people back there. And then once they fuck with you, they fuck with you. But you need clips. You need all these things to help you. You can't. It's not just one thing. There's, there is no one answer. The reason I say YouTube, and, and I'll go back, is most people, and I'm speaking like our age, 26, 27, 28-year-olds plus, do not have Kick or Twitch downloaded on their phone. A hundred percent. But that's my point is you do and it so everywhere. I'm just, so I, I agree. So, But my point is if you're on YouTube, more people have the YouTube app and are actively on YouTube that will discover you and follow you. And I'm also at the point where YouTube moves the last on everything video-wise. They were the last one to go to shorts. I think they're going to make a massive, massive play at live streaming. And that's going to be the database that you really want to be on because Twitch and Kick, yes, I know Amazon owns Twitch, so it's like hard to count Amazon out in anything. But more people are already on YouTube, so why not go to the biggest pond and jump the fuck in rather than some small pond that I don't even know the percentage of people that have Twitch and Kick. But it's and because it's always and, right? And I say that strictly because I do 100% agree with you you to get that older demographic. But in that same breath, that older demographic isn't fucking watching a guy sleep in his bed where these people on Twitch are watching motherfuckers sleep in their it's, bed it's on a, deep on a strip. community. I fully, that's, that's, I fully so that's agree. different where like, again, YouTube hasn't had that trained community. We talk about it all the time with short form video, long form videos. If you only make short form, the people that follow you only care about your short form content. If you're making long form content, then the people that are following you are for your long form content. So it's, it's, it's the same thing. If you're a streamer on Twitch, people are following you because they want to see you stream. Now, they also want to see you make clips on TikTok. They also want to see long-form videos cut up. That's all reality. But I think it's an and. I don't think it's just one fucking thing. I just find it I find it hard because the thing you're talking about, and there's probably more platforms, is StreamYard, whereas you can do everything all in one. It hurts the 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 visibility on the other platforms that you're not what, actively live but, on. But it doesn't matter because it's like you're getting more reach. It doesn't matter if it's like, oh, we're a little bit down on the out. You're already at zero on Twitch. If you're streaming on Twitch, you cannot grow following just by streaming on Twitch. I'm very aware. You can't. That's why I wouldn't go to Twitch. Same with YouTube. You couldn't just like, I'm on YouTube. Like when I scroll YouTube, I am never being served someone live that I don't follow. If I don't follow them. But I'm saying tomorrow, if we were like, let's go all on live stream, I'd be like, let's go to YouTube where Um, we have 12,000 followers. And I would say, let's do it to all, to everything. Because it doesn't make sense. Tomatoes, to not. tomatoes. All I'm right. Single. As we wrap up the show, I did some investigated journalism here, and I want to break it to Joshua. I wanted to keep it a surprise. So, Joshua said in our last vlog, please go check it out, that the Jets are cursed. And they might be. They might be. But my theory is that the NFL and the average fan hates the New York Jets which is actually the reason they're not good. Can I just reframe one thing before you start? Please. I don't know how much I think the Jets are cursed as much as I think that they are poisoned with bad leadership. From top to bottom, they are poisoned with loser mentality and lack of leadership. Like, I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know. Again, I don't know the Jets owner very well, but I'm assuming he got given the team by his family. No. No, I think he bought it, actually. He bought the team? Okay. Woody what, Johnson. Woody Johnson, whatever. Woody may be a great businessman. He may be good at a bunch of shit. Running a team, he could not be worse at. He could not be worse. Devonta Adams has been talking a lot about the culture there. Yeah, it's, already. it's loot. Listen, we, again, we've played on a lot of sports teams. I have a lot of friends that are playing at the highest level of the hockey. You, same in baseball. You know winning mentality, and there's winners and there's losers. Jets are riddled with fucking losers. Losers they lost in college, they lost in high school, they lost in the pros. They're just like, I'm a good football player. And yes, they may be good football players, but they're losers. So Joshua, you obviously know the HBO series Hard Knocks, correct? Of course. Single-handedly, some of the best 
docu style shows ever. It's gotten a little overplayed with the off season and in season now. I used to like just like the off season vibes, but anyways, I want to go through a couple of teams who have appeared on Hard Knocks, and then two years later have either made the Super Bowl or had like record breaking seasons. Just to give you examples, so the Atlanta Falcons appeared on the HBO Hard Knocks in 2014. Then in 2016, they made the Super Bowl where they famously lost the massive comeback from the Patriots. Yeah, remember. Okay. okay, but still, they were one of the worst teams two years later, made the Super Bowl. The Rams appeared in 2016, then lost the Super Bowl in 2018. Obviously, they went on to win in like 2021, but 2018 made the Super Bowl after being the worst team in the league two years later, but lost. The Browns appeared in 2018, then in the 2020-2021 season, broke their playoff drought of 26 years with Baker Mayfield winning their first playoff game. Now, our Detroit Lions in 2022 appeared after being one of the worst teams and then broke the longest NFL playoff drought of 31 years, winning two playoff games and almost going to the Super Bowl a few plays away. And the Jets appeared in the 2023 season. Went seven and ten, and they're pretty much on track to go seven and ten again. And my theory is because the average fan in the NFL hates the New York Jets, so they won't allow them to be good. So, in that theory, does that mean that Detroit is going to lose in the Super Bowl this year? I'm not even saying it. Kind of seems like that. Like I know, I know the picture I just painted. Like, yeah, I well, the picture. Because I'm trying to get to what you're saying there. No, the two years later, essentially for the Lions would have been last year when they won two playoff games. And then lost to go to the Super Bowl. But that would have been could but be roughly two, it, three years. It, it could, could be, be that two, three window. years. Like it, it, we it are puts in, that you in that window. Is what you're agreed. Talking. Agreed. But what I'm saying is, all those teams became fan favorites, which has then led to their success. Whereas the New York Jets have not become fan favorites, and the NFL hates them. Obviously, largely because Aaron Rodgers and what he's doing. The if, NFL won't allow them to be good. But what if the Jets get another wide receiver? Oh, and they have 19 wide receivers. But what if? Or they got like one of Aaron Rodgers' friends on the squad. <laughs> I saw a tweet that was literally like, this Jets team's a Randall Cobb player away from making the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Randall Cobb, dude. They're like, we need a Randall Is Cobb. Is he even in the league still? I don't even know. I have no, I I have have no, no idea. idea. But listen, if you made it this far, drop a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, and comment wristband. DM us on Instagram, black or white. Send us your address and we'll ship it to you. Until next time, love you. I love about to get all this dough, ain't no fuck niggas know I swear to God we the ghost, this ain't the story they told Man, if you know, then you know I never had to tell my dogs that we on roof for breaks 